Welcome to India, everyone. So we began our trip in New Delhi. And we stayed there and explored for two days. Although I was not able to see everything, I will share with you here what I did see and enjoyed. India is full of culture so foreign to us Westerners that I find it incredibly fascinating. The first thing you cannot overlook is the crazy driving. As disorganized as it seems though, everyone seems to have a great awareness of the possible distractions like other cars, scooters, pedestrians, and all types of animals that you can imagine. There are usually no lines on the road, and it appears to be the norm that everyone just fits in where they can. Every space on the road is utilized. The many scooters, many holding three people, make it a little bit nerve-wracking to us foreigners. And the honking is 100% non-stop. I would never attempt driving here. We paid $50 for a driver all day. He took us around from site to site and was with us for more than eight hours. That could be on the high side, I do admit. However, we did arrange it through a hotel, so it seemed a little bit safer. We started our trip in New Delhi at the Rashtrapati Bhavan. This is now the official residence of the President of India. The area of more than five acres is a popular space where many ceremonies are held. I was a little disappointed to learn that you cannot get close at all to any of the buildings, but it was worth the stop anyhow. Within view of the Rashtrapani Bhavan, you can see the India Gate which is quite majestic looking, even from a distance. The India Gate was stop number two on our trip. The India Gate is a massive red sandstone arch built to commemorate the Indian and British soldiers who died in World War I, the Northwest Frontier Province, and the Third Afghan War. An eternal flame burns in memory of all who have passed. The third site we visited was Humayun's tomb. This is best described with a little history about the Mughal dynasty, which was very powerful and influential. They ruled over India for over 300 years. At the height, their empire extended from Kandahar in the northwest to Bengal in the east and from Kashmir in the north to the Deccan in the south. The Mughals established a rich blend of Islamic and Hindu traditions. Humayun's tomb was created for the second Mughal emperor. It was built in 1565 by the Persian architect Mertz Mitza Gihas. It was commensurate by Humayun's wife Haji Begum. Inside the tomb lies the Mughal emperor, his wives, and other family members. Inside the beautiful built tomb, you can feel the abundance that was once here. And outside, there are beautiful gardens. After embracing all of the beauty from Humayun's tomb, we made our way to the Lotus Temple. The Lotus Temple is also known as Baha'i House of Worship. This is Delhi's most modern structure. The temple's religion originated in Persia and is based on all humanity being of one race. Followers of all religions are allowed and it is a place where silence and order prevail. It was completed in 1986 and has the shape of a lotus made from white marble. The most amazing thing about this stop was looking at the temple from the outside. It is truly a magnificent structure. We cannot, however, take footage of the inside, but it was a little bit plain, especially when you compare it to other temples. The thing that I really found fascinating was the people watching. The crowd was incredibly huge to see this temple, and it appeared that 99% of the crowd were people from India. We finished our first day in New Delhi with the Kup Minar. What a great way to finish the day. Here is a little history of the site. Constant internal war in India left them open to attack from a new wave of Muslim rulers. These rulers were enticed by the tales of India's fabulous wealth. Some of these rulers stayed and became collectively known as the Delhi Sultanates. It was Qutbuddin Abak who founded many Muslim dynasties and who also built the Qutb Minar in Delhi. The Qutb Minar is India's highest single tower. It marked the site of the first Muslim kingdom. It was constructed to announce the advent of the Muslim sultans. It is a fusion of decorated beautiful Hindi pillars and Islamic domes and arcs. The beauty here amazed me for hours.
On day two, we visited three sites. All of them were a little further away than the ones we visited on the first day. We started our trip with the Akshardam Temple. From the temple's website, Akshardam means the divine abode of God. It is hailed as the eternal place of devotion, purity, and peace. Swaminarayan Akshardam at New Delhi is a temple abode of God, a Hindu house of worship, and a spiritual and cultural campus dedicated to devotion, learning, and harmony. Unfortunately, I could not take my camera or phone inside of the temple, so I do not have any more footage. However, this is by far the most beautiful temple I have ever seen. Every inch of the temple is either beautifully carved or has some type of artistic masterpiece adorned on it. We spent almost two hours admiring this temple's beauty. By the way, this is number one on TripAdvisor and for good reason. It is incredible. The next stop we made was Red Fort, also known as Lal Kila. Lal means red and Kila means fort. This seat of power created by the Mughal emperors got its name because of the red sandstone which was used to build it. It literally is red from the sandstone. The main entry is through Lahar Gate, which leads directly into a bazaar where you can find all kinds of interesting Indian paintings, pashminas, figurines, jewelry, and all types of souvenirs. Behind the gate you will find Nakar Khanna Pavilion, where ceremonial music was played when guests would arrive. Directly behind this you will see Daiwanayam Hall, where the emperor gave daily audience to the public. The emperor would sit under a lavishly carved stone canopy. Nearby is the Khas Mahal, where the royal apartments were. There were special rooms for worship and sleeping. There were also summer and winter accommodations. During the winter, the inhabitants would sleep on the top floor, and during the summer, it was too hot, and they would go below to the cooler rooms to escape the heat. We had an amazing guide on this trip, Mr. Dali Jeets. You can find him at 5seasontours.com. His personal email is dalijeetsn at yahoo.com. I will place his information below. And he gave me permission to do so. We highly recommend you contacting him if you are planning on visiting. He gave us such a wonderful tour, and the tour truly helps you capture the history and culture. The last stop of the day was the Lax Mirwanian Temple, also known as the Bilarmander. It is a Hindu temple. This temple was inaugurated by Mahatma Gandhi and was built by Baldeo Das Birla and his sons from 1933 to 1939. It was the first large Hindu temple built in Delhi. The temple is spread over seven acres and contains many shrines and large gardens. This was another one that I could not film inside because they do not allow any phones or cameras inside. However, it was absolutely beautiful and definitely worth the trip. Alright guys, thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel and and also give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. I will see you in my next video. Love you. Bye.